So now, the question isn't whether or not Mike Vick could be everything people wish for in a quarterback, but rather, are we witnessing a football phenomenon right before our very eyes? We all hold our breaths and vicariously go with him every play, hoping that he'll do something amazing. Whether it be video games, toys, licensed jerseys, or collectibles, Mike Vick is the new must-have component in order for fans to feel what the game of football is transforming into. The fans have found a hero to believe in, read about, and root for. Now, when it comes to Mike Vick, simply put, Mike Vick is the future of quarterbacks, if not the future of the game itself. How did Nike approach it? How will Nike approach it? Once again, we'll take a look at Mike Vick's insights about speed, movement, instinct, and from a series of conversations and revealing dialogue, create a product that not only takes him farther and faster, but becomes a continuing installment of the world's greatest product for the game's most explosive and unexpected player, Mike Vick. Hopefully that tells you how we get started. <laughs> What's going on world, George Kill here and I'm back with a brand new episode of Open the Box. In case you don't know, Open the Box provides you with untold sneaker stories. I'm in Portland at the Pensole Academy with my man E. Scott Morris. What's going on? What's going on, man? How you doing? Great, good to see you. Yeah, yeah, man. Now look, for those who don't know, tell the viewers about E. Scott Morris and the history of shoes. Okay, so really quick, um, I've been a footwear designer, creative director, 26 years. I started off my journey in footwear uh, with Reebok. Worked for guys like Emmett Smith, Shaquille. Had the privilege to come to Nike and in my Nike time, really having the opportunity to work with Mike Vick exclusively. Other athletes as well, uh, but really he was the, a big turning point for me in my career. So like I said, here I am almost 26 years later. Uh, not at Nike now, but like I said, this was a great time in my life. Couldn't, couldn't have been happy. Yeah, definitely. And, and so that's what intrigued me about, you know, we just did the Mike Vick right. interview. Let's start from the beginning. What took place in that initial meeting with Mike Vick as far as his, his signature shoe? Well, again, we got the call and they said, you know, hey, we want to get you together with this guy, young up and coming quarterback, Michael Vick. We think he's going to be really big. So we meet at Houston's, this amazing, simple restaurant in Atlanta. Uh, myself, guy named Mark Cavanaugh, uh, Nancy Benoit, we're all together. And here we are, and we meet Mike. What surprised me, this man brought shoes with him. He brought his Jordans, brought his Air Force Ones, a couple other shoes, and he's saying to us, you know, hey, look, this is what I'm thinking. And I'm like, wow, this man knows exactly what he wants to do. <laughs> so as the designer, it's like he's giving me the notes. Yeah. He was like, what I'd like to have is are things like this. And so that really kind of inspired me to start the process of sketching and creating, and ultimately getting to what was Vic One. So one of the things in the sketchbook, and again, I would make these books for Michael so that he could actually begin to learn the process. The actual initial conversation was, hey, Jordan changed basketball, Peyton changed football, Mother Teresa changed, you know, outreach and caring, you know, Einstein changed science, Picasso changed art, Bruce Lee changed martial arts. I kept asking him, what's your legacy? And really that's where Michael said, I want to be unexpected. So unexpected really came from him. The following pages, you know, we talked about everything from, you know, how he cuts up the field, his ability to cut almost like a knife, you know, practically surgical, how he was a motorcycle amongst cars, right? Way faster than everybody else, but he had an elegance and a power that everybody knew he had and just wanted to see how he used it. Just trying to figure out what his needs were and how we could help him, right? Ultimately, again, the book tells the story and, and at this point it was like, Mike, I can't tell you what's next until you tell me what's next. So this was kind of the end of the, the first phase of this book. Ultimately, I kept thinking if, if I draw the shoe small, it's like looking at it on a large video screen. Post-it notes became my, my choice. So ultimately, you know, if you can see of all those sketches, these two small sketches actually were fighting each other. And I said, that's where we're going. And ultimately, as you can see, it pretty much looks like what yeah. the sketch looked like, right? We went into some of the tech, you know, uh, tech pack overview. You actually drew these. Yes, this is by hand. So all the kids at home, if you don't have a computer, you don't need a computer, you need to take the time and draw stuff really well, because you can do it, okay? I did it, you can do it. Um, so yeah, this is not Illustrator, this is actually by hand. Um, and again, the colors to match, 
that's him seeing it for the first time and it's a big smile on his face and me saying to him, hey, it's, it's only the beginning. Now at this time, did you know what you had on your hands? I didn't, I had no idea. I was excited to work with him because I love football and I love the way he was representing the game of football. So it really was this perfect synergy. So tell me, after that first one, the success of that, what inspired the two? Michael said to us, you know, we are really blessed. We started talking about the concept of opposites, right? How are we gonna make a product that looks clear at high speeds and is blurry when he's standing still? So we started down that process and we were thinking, you know what, he is lightweight power. He is that motorcycle amongst cars. He is literally that lightning bolt, right? You know, he's got precision like a machine, but he's got the natural power like a big cat. Right, this guy can go. Jason Maiden, my good friend, fellow designer, he did the logo. And he was like, hey, let's make sure that logo pops. So I'm chasing the idea, thinking about what I think you know, it could be. We think, maybe we should go with shocks. But then we realize after we do it, you know what, we did some testing, maybe Zoom Air is better for him, get him down low to the ground. So we start you know, doing more sketching, more thinking. And what is it that he really needs, because it's about him. Ultimately, we do decide that Zoom Air is the best way to go. It's the most responsive. We definitely wanted to get the blower in there, get some air intake. And before we knew it, we started getting closer, right? And starting to get the feel of what we thought Vic2 would be. But what people didn't realize is, my client also is a very smart guy. You just don't understand his style of smart. And so again, we got to the initial concept. Mike, what do you think? He said, I love it. I said, well, if you like it, sign it. So he signs it, right? And then of course, boom, bam, and there we are. I'm seeing some some Vic twos over there that uh, didn't make the the actual scrapbook. Right, right. That may have not have ever been right. seen. No, nope. so uh, little Carolina action right there. You know, Mike was always big about the powder blue, right? And remember, Ferguson was his high school. So again, in honor of Ferguson, there you go, right there. You don't want to miss that. In the old four three three. The reason why they exist is because we start asking questions, you know. And then of course the Captain America version, right? Red, white, blue. Right, Pro Bowl style. So everything starts to click, everything starts to work. Yeah. And it works in our favor. When did you start these different processes with the next shoe mm. while he was playing in the, the current shoe? Well, you remember, you talk about that nine to 15 month window, right. right? I think the key, and a lot of people might not realize it, but you literally have to be perpetual, meaning it's a constant. There is no start, stop, exactly. start, no, it's constant. Mm -hmm. So if you really look, if I took you back in these sketchbooks, I could show you in the Vic 1 sketchbook, Vic 2. I could show you Vic 3 in the Vic 2 sketchbook because it was perpetual. So what I was doing was I was doing the old skip the rock. You know what I mean? It was like, that's a good idea, let it live. That's a good idea, let it live, moving forward. By the time we got to you know, Vic 3, the learnings were pretty clear. It was like, we can't do what we did. We get really gotta move forward, right? So we started looking at furniture and the big idea of, you know what, we gotta be bold. We gotta be provocative and modern. We, we have to be unexpected, because that's what they know about us, right? So we start writing the brief. Aaron Miller, my, my ace, he writes the brief. We set things up, we talk about it. We try to figure out, you know, is he a, a player for all times, all seasons, right? And this is where I say, hey, if he played in 1924, would he check? Would he check in 24? Yeah, he checked in 24, absolutely, right? We looked at, you know, beautiful, you know, bicycles, Italian bicycles, and how the boldness of some of the wheels, you know, how do we bring some of that feeling into his product? How do I lock him in? How do I strap him down? How do I protect him? What I realized was when somebody spats, there's usually the crossing over of the tape of the foot. And I thought if I could protect him, give him 270 degrees of protection, I might be able to protect him, you know what I mean, when he does these hard cutting, hard details, right? So hey, even in, you know, 2015, is this the mic we're looking at? Right. Hey, he still be great. Yeah. And so again, five step drop, seven step drop. What does his foot look like when he's taking these chances, right? And again, here's Mike's quote, you gotta make this next one hot, <laughs> right? So when he would say things like that, I'm like, gotta write it on a post-it note, stick it in the book, and I have to go back and look at that every day. So I start sketching the process of the 270, the lockdown, trying to figure out the strap and where I think everything fits. But in the process, I really needed to get back to the essence of what the shoe represented. So this really was the essence. And that's when I think he was even in agreement. Yeah, that's the look. Ultimately, this is the moment, June 14, 2004, he and I get together, I tell him the whole story about what I'm thinking, and he actually says, you know what, E, 
I love the idea, let's do it. And I just remember the look in the room, everybody was like, oh my gosh, they're gonna do that shoe. And then of course there was the Dirty South, which again, it was telling Mike's bigger story from how much he loved boxing to his love of Virginia Tech, right? Pop Warner, wearing the number eight, 4.25 in the 40, right? 920 yards on the ground. People who helped us along the way. So Mike wanted to let everybody know, this is who I am. This is my family. This is what I represent. And so we just thought it was so exciting. It was like, why can't we just celebrate it all? Right, right. And so I just basically got the strap from the factory and I just drew all over the strap and it said, we'll burn it in. You just draw it and walk yeah. off. I was like, okay. So I drew everything and I walked off. Where were you at that point as far as your profession? as far as his profession after the three. It felt great. I mean, you know, you felt like you couldn't, you couldn't lose. Yeah. You know, it was just, it was only gonna get better. But what I didn't know is, I, I shared with you earlier, it was as if a lot of people got in the elevator of the process, right? It went from like six of us being in it, like 30 people. Yeah, yeah. Everybody coming from everywhere. Hey, I'm gonna help you. I, I was doing just fine, <laughs> but okay. Yeah. Uh, and that's when it got difficult. Right, so again, we started the process, bold strokes, you know, thinking about all the different ways that we could help address his need. Is there a way to really go to a new place with him? But again, he reminded me of such a heroic character that, you know, I saw this Gundam character and said, you know what? Oh my gosh, they look exactly the same. How do I take some of that excitement with some of the automotive excitement and bring it all together? So as I start sketching, if it seems a little robotic in the actual sketches, it was the intent to, to really bring out the aggressive nature of some of the product, right? Even to the point where I actually said, you know what, I'm gonna actually make him look like a Gundam character and make a mobile suit. And again, the smaller sketches, I could feel which things I needed. I mean, literally right down to, yeah, is that is that the bottom? Yeah, that is the bottom. I, you know how you say you know that you know? But the upper, because I had so many voices, it was getting challenging. I'm like, I don't know if I can, take it. The sketches kind of tell the story about, you know, where I was going, what I was trying to do, and you can see it in some of them, you know. Yes, that's hand carbon fiber. That's not Illustrator, okay? I drew every single one of those squares. So I just want kids to know you can take your time and draw the squares. You can do it. Not that this was the shoe, but this was the thinking, right? And this was an early sample, right? I always wanted to kind of show his cool, calm, collected demeanor with his eyes. It always told the story, and I love that, right? And again, it was an early version. The bottom did come to fruition. It did stay this way, but the upper did change, right? So there was a lot here, but we said, you know what? I don't know if this is the one. And this is where my good friend Aaron Miller and Mike Vick teamed up, and they kept saying, guys, look, I love the fact of the diamond traction. I love that you got inspired by the hardest thing in the world. So stick with that. But just go one and three. Go one and three, mix them together. I think we got something. And I really think that's where, you know, we did hit it. We hit it right. You know what I mean? So we got Mike back to the feeling of the one and some of the horsepower of the three. So Vic Five, you know, we realized, okay, now's the time to do a reset. It was the perfect time for a reset. Michael actually asked for a reset. He said, E, let's just get back to the essence. But I was really big on a couple of things. The first thing was, you know, Mike was like that low flying stealth fighter. Can you catch him? Do you see him? If you see him, is it too late? Cause he's already passed you, right? But Mike's got that elegance and he started growing up. You know, this guy's driving nice cars. He's wearing nice watches. He can fly on private jets. We started going down that road, you know, Chanel and some of the high-end Testoni, a lot of the Italian brands. How do we really bring out the high quality, right? So again, that's where Aaron kind of comes in and says, L-E, we got to keep it clean. All right, I got it, I got it. And again, we went through our own kind of notes and what we thought we should be doing better. I talked about a serpentine style, you know, look, you know, you know, and I'm wishing that it could just like machine up his foot and lock him in, right? But ultimately I said, you know, it was very bird-like, very pinion wing-like. And I thought, boy, you know what? Maybe we need to just highlight that. Let's get on that. So I started chasing those concepts and those details. And little did I know as I kind of went through the process, you know, you talk about fighter aircraft, but then you talk about birds of prey. All of these things started happening, right? And I'm thinking, do I actually do a stretch strap and a side lace to lock them in? Is that what I do? Do I do the serpentine and actually do it simple? So again, I'm trying to let me let myself go down a couple paths, but ultimately pick. And these were kind of the two that started the I started to lean towards, right? One of the things that was exciting for me was there was a first sample, and we ultimately got to 
this, right? And one of the things that I had shared with you, George, is that, you know, the Falcon head was a big deal. Right. So even from the very beginning, I was attempting to bring the Falcon's head. And again, Mike was big on MJ, down to my, my friend Jason made I'm like, Jason, can you give me a six? I don't have a six in hand. So they actually got me the six, and we said, we're gonna do Mike's version of the six tone. Little did we know that, you know, sometimes things go the way you don't think they will, right? I didn't know what was gonna happen. None of us did. I only knew one thing, he was a decent guy, he worked hard, I was bummed because we weren't going to probably get to work together and I didn't know what the future was going to hold. And then we got the call, hey, Vic Five, it stops. That actually didn't stop you though. No, that didn't stop me. I just believed in my heart of hearts, it wouldn't end. So there was a six, you know, and I thought, you know what, how do I tell this story, right? I wrote how I felt, right, but I also kind of wrote what I thought about him, right? And I mean, he never saw this. So, you know, hopefully he sees these, whoa. And I said, now then, first thing, you know, you need to know is that this dude is without question, the rawest ever to take the QB spot and freak it. But again, it didn't stop me from creating. I kept going, right? And again, we looked at everything. And one thing I thought about was the whole, you know, this linear seeing through to the real person, right? Who is this guy? Do you know him? Do you know what he's really like, right? And again, the lines were up to like, like you know, louvers or blinds. Can you see through to what the real picture is? And again, the bold blocking, the different ideas, you know, always inspired by automobiles. Ultimately, there was an illustration in this that sort of set the tone, right? And this was that illustration that, you know, just the seven, you know, sitting behind the, the slots. And I said, that's my guy. I'm like, that's the shoe, I'm gonna do that, right? Um, and we chased it, but again, it was never to be. It was never to be. But the idea was such a good idea that what a lot of people don't know is we were able to talk through the idea and a, a particular individual in the National Football League took the baton and it was LaDainian Tomlinson. And so the 2-1 replaced the seven and we actually restructured the whole thing and it was the birth of LT Screen. Just to show you how good God really is, look at all of the good that came from it, right? You know, and after I walked off, the x-ray happened, right, right? right? That for me was the kind of the last, like, you know, was it all worth it? Sure it was all worth it, right? You know, uh, Nike decided to, to give me, uh, some of the guys in the group, my own shoe based on this saga. There were only five pairs made. Um, and I had two, I gave one away to my nephew. Mike, Mike's wearing them, probably, I don't know. Um, but the whole idea was, uh, it had the best of all the shoes, right? So it had the strap of the three, it had the panels of the two uh, and the three. Um, it had uh, some of the purse from the four. Uh, it had the ones, you know, details low. And of course we got to put it on the Air Force One bottom. But the reason why it says X-ray is because uh, all my years in the Marine Corps, uh, my call signal was Echo 5 X-ray. So I was a Sergeant of Marines. But we had so many guys who had the last name starting with the letter M they told me, you gotta pick another letter. I said, okay, I'm gonna go with X. So the phonetic call signal for X is X-ray. So I became Echo 5 X-ray. So that's why it's the five in the X-ray. So all of the greatness of all the shoes put together just for me.